Welcome to the League of Young Inventors. This is Inventing a Marble Run, Part 1. Have you ever played with or seen a Marble Run toy like this? They're pretty cool, right? But they can also be really expensive. Both of the Marble Runs here cost more than $100 a piece. But here's the thing. Did you know that you can make fun toys like Marble Runs for almost no money using everyday materials that you can find in your home right now? You totally can. Check out this very cool Marble Run made by an inventor from the Dyson Foundation on the right. While you watch, I want you to pay attention to the main materials he used to make his Marble Run. Hi Tom. Hi Shane. Wow, this is impressive. It's almost my height. What's taking you hours? It has taken a long time. It's taken a lot of experimenting, testing, retesting, all the different angles, just to adjust it so the marble can run all the way through perfectly. Right, I've got to see it in action. Let's let's, let's do, do this. It. Yeah. Oh, made it uphill. Sandpaper. Yeah. Perfect. That is incredible. So, what did he use? Mostly just cardboard, which is very inexpensive. It can even be free if you use recycled cardboard. But look at all the cool stuff he was able to do with this simple material. In this lesson and the next, we're going to be making our own marble runs. We won't have enough time to build something as fancy as this one. But what we are going to do is teach you how to make a simple but cool marble run. Then, you can take what you learn with us and use all that information to build whatever kind of marble run you want. In order to make an awesome marble run, we need to understand the science of how a marble run works. Marble runs use ramps to bring a marble from the top of the run down to the bottom. Ramps are a type of inclined plane. That means that ramps are at an angle. They're tilted or slanted surfaces that something can roll or slide on. Can you think of any other places where you've seen ramps? You may have seen ramps used to help people in wheelchairs or pushing grocery carts go up and down. And ramps can also be used just for fun, like in slides and roller coasters. At school, you may have learned about some of the different kinds of pushes and pulls that make things move. Do you know the name of the force that pulls kids on slides and marbles on ramps down to the ground? The force that pulls everything down is called gravity. So think about the last time you went down a slide. You probably already know that on some slides, the force of gravity pulling you down can make you go pretty fast. What would be the fastest path from the top to the bottom? Jumping straight down. If you jumped from the top of a slide, the force of gravity would be pulling your body straight down toward the ground. But when you slide down a ramp, like this slide, gravity pulls your body down a longer path toward the ground. That helps you slide down slower and more safely. Now that we know how ramps work, I'm going to teach you some maker skills that will help you construct a three-ramp marble run made of simple materials such as paper and cardboard. Don't worry if you don't have any marbles at home. We have ideas for other types of balls that you can use. So now I'm going to teach you some building tricks to help you make your marble runs. Are you ready? Let's go! Today you'll be using very simple materials from around your house to make your marble runs. You can pause on this slide while you gather your building kit. You will need one piece of cardboard or a cardboard box that is at least 12 inches wide by 12 inches high. You can use an empty cereal box or a shipping box for this. Two sheets of printer paper or construction paper. One small cup. It could be made of anything light, like paper, plastic, or foam. One roll of tape. Masking tape is the best, but any kind of tape should work. One pair of scissors. One pencil. One ruler. And one marble. You could also use a small foam ball, a bouncy ball, 
or a large round bead. Here is the first step. Using this example, use your ruler to draw three angled lines going down your cardboard. These lines show where you will place your ramps and where your marble will roll, so they need to zigzag back and forth just like you see here, so that the marble stays on the ramps. You will see that this person is drawing their lines right to the edge of the cardboard. That is very important. You want to draw your lines right to the edge of your cardboard piece, too. Make sure you angle your lines so that all three lines fit evenly inside the cardboard. Pause the video here while you draw your lines. Next, you're going to start making your paper ramps. Fold one piece of paper into fourths. To do this, you want to fold your paper exactly in half and then crease it. Then fold exactly in half once more and crease. Unfold your paper and smooth out the creases. Then cut along those crease lines. You will end up with four strips of paper. Then you can do the same thing to the other piece of paper. You should end up with eight strips of paper that are basically the same size. Pause the video here while you cut your strips. Next, we need to fold some of our paper strips into ramps. To do this, place your ruler in the center of a strip of paper. Make sure to keep it even on both sides. Then, carefully fold up one side of the paper over the ruler and smooth it across. Do the same thing to the other side. Next, remove the ruler. Then, press down with your fingers on both folds. You want to keep your creases nice and sharp. Do the same thing with two more strips of paper until you have three ramps in all. Pause the video here while you fold your ramps. Once you have your tape, you can put two pieces on one side of your ramp like you see in this picture. All you need is two pieces, so don't use any more than that. Then, you're going to line up the top of that ramp where the tape is with one of the lines you drew earlier, so that the top of the ramp follows the line, and smooth down the tape with your finger so that it really sticks on. Make sure you place your ramps right at the edge of your cardboard. After you've put on all three ramps, you're ready to stick on your cup. You can put a piece of tape so that half of the tape is inside the cup and half of it is sticking out. Then smooth the tape down inside the cup. And then you'll tape your cup right at the bottom of that last ramp, just where you think the marble will end up. Press pause while you do those three steps now. Now, even if you follow all of these directions perfectly, you might still have a problem when you go to test your marble run. Look at this picture here. What's going wrong? Yep, the marble wants to keep going in the same direction unless there's something to stop it and make it change its direction. 
So the last thing we need to do is add some bumpers to stop the marble from flying off the side. Making bumpers is easier than making ramps because you only need to fold each paper strip once instead of twice. Here's how you do it. First, you want to test your ramp to see where your marble flies off. Now you know where to place your bumper. Right there. Then, Fold a strip of paper exactly in half, the long way, so it looks just like the example in the video. Next, you're going to attach the bumper to your marble run. Put a piece of tape on the top and another piece of tape on the bottom of one side of your bumper. Make sure you place your tape the long way. Then slide the bumper right where you want it to go and smooth the tape onto the back of the cardboard. Your bumper should fit right next to the ramp. Now test again. Whoops! This ramp needs another bumper, so let's make another one, just like the first. Fold the paper in half, put a piece of tape on the top and the bottom, slide it where you want it to go, and smooth the tape over the back of the cardboard. Now test one more time. Will it work? Yes! Success! Pause the video here while you make your bumpers. Congratulations! You've made a marble run! Now I'm wondering, how long does it take your marble to get from the top to the bottom? Let's test it out. You can use a timer, like a stopwatch or a cell phone. If you don't have any of those, you can count 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, and so on, while you send your marble down. Make sure you start timing as soon as you let your marble go at the top of your marble run, and stop as soon as it hits the cup. You can pause here while you test. So, how did you do? When I tested my marble run, I found that it takes about three seconds to get from the top to the bottom. That's pretty fast. But what if I want to change the speed of my marble run? How do I do that? Let's find out. Right now, we have a basic marble run, but we can actually make a few small changes that will make our marble runs work differently. Let's experiment with changing the angles of the ramps to see what happens. Here's how to change the angles of your ramps. First, you want to carefully remove one of your ramps from the cardboard. To change the angle, you can move the top of the ramp down a bit and move the bottom of the ramp up a bit. Do this for all three ramps. You can move your ramps around until the angles look flatter than they did before. Don't forget to make sure your ramps stay close to the edge of the cardboard. You might have to move the cup, too. Pause the video here while you change the angles of your ramps. Now that you've changed the angles, let's time our marble runs again to see if anything changed. You can do the same thing to test that you did before. Remember to start testing right when you let go of your marble at the top of the run, and stop right when it hits the cup at the bottom. Pause here while you test your new run. When I change the angles of my marble run, now it takes about 
six seconds to get from the top to the bottom. That's a lot slower. Why did it take so much longer this time? It all has to do with angles. Let's say that two identical twins decide to race each other down two slides that are the same distance. That means that from end to end, those slides are the same length. The only thing that's different about the slides is that one has a very steep incline. It's almost standing straight up and down. And the other side is a bit flatter. It's not as steep. So which twin do you think will reach the bottom first? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the left will reach the bottom first. The length of the slides is the same, but to make the slide on the left steeper, the top needs to be at a higher height. That changes the angle of the slide. And a steeper slide means a faster ride. A steep ramp has an angle that is closer to a straight up and down path. So if you go down a really steep slide, you're getting pulled down almost as quickly as if you fell straight down. Gravity doesn't change. It stays the same no matter where you are or what you're on. But a steep slide lets you use gravity to your advantage, so you can go down faster. This ramp is flatter than that first ramp. Can you think of the flattest thing you could make here? Yep, it's a straight line going across. But would a completely straight line work for a marble run or a slide? Not at all, right? Gravity doesn't change. It still pulls on you, even when you're on a flat surface. But on a flat surface, there's nowhere lower for you to go, so you or your marble would just stay still. But putting one end even a bit higher than the other gives you an angle. Now you have somewhere lower you can go. You need an angle to make a marble start rolling down a ramp, so that gravity can pull it down to the lowest part. Today we made a marble runs with three ramps, and we just saw how changing the angle of the ramps changes the speed. Remember, if you want to make your marble go faster, the angle has to be steeper. If you want to make your marble go slower, the angle has to be flatter. But we don't have to stop here. We can make even more changes to our marble runs. What's something we could add to our marble runs that can really change the speed? How about more ramps? Now the orange marble run has to go back and forth across five ramps, but the blue one only has to roll across three ramps. Which one do you think will reach the bottom first? I'm going to let you think about this until I see you again next session. So get ready to learn a few more tricks to make our marble run super fun to play with. Thanks for working so hard on your marble runs with us. We'll see you next time.